first shared their stories in caves, connected art, nature, and science, led us toward new horizons. Who thought to capture motion, spark an engine to life, turn television into a playground? Every day, you create the playful, the functional, and the unexpected. You break down walls and take us to astonishing places. Tell stories, leap borders, and create beauty for tomorrow. Because at Unity, we believe the world is a better place with more creators in it, where everyone has a chance to shape the world. Good afternoon, South APAC, and uh, welcome to part three of our Building a 2D Game series. Uh, to all of our friends from South Asia, Southeast Asia, Australia, New Zealand, and Pacific, uh, welcome aboard. Just some interaction notes for today's webinar. Uh, please put your questions in the Q&A box. Uh, we won't be answering any questions in the chat box and we will at stages uh, disable the chat function if you are joining us from Zoom. If you're joining us from another social media streaming platform, you may ask questions in that box and we will relay it into the main room. And if you're joining us on Zoom, we do not use the raise hand function in today's webinar. Unity is being used in many different industries. Our, uh, our developers are working in architecture, engineering, construction, automotive transport manufacturing, in education, film and animation, science and research, amongst many others. So uh, having Unity competency uh, gives you many avenues for employment in many different industries. And with that, you can become Unity certified. Uh, if you pop into the chat box, if anyone would like to uh, let us know where they're from. Uh, you may use a chat box now. Let us know where you're calling from and uh, if you are doing Unity certification, and if so, what level you're at. Um, this provides you a pathway to be able to be employed in a game developer and any of those industries we just talked about earlier. Recently, Unity acquired, uh, among some other acquisitions we did last year, we acquired Weta Digital, the special effects company behind movies such as Lord of the Rings, and more recently, the Doctor Strange movie and the new Batman movie, which came out last week. And we also acquired Zebra Dynamics, which makes real life humans powered by AI and machine learning. Stay with us at the end of today's webinar. We'll be giving one of our registered attendees a chance to win a prize pack with some great Unity swag. Uh, this draw will happen about 30 minutes after the webinar. If you've already registered uh, through email, uh, we will, uh, you will not need to uh, use the scan me function. If you are joining us from any of the social media platforms listed there, please take out your QR code if you would like to be in the lucky draw. Uh, scan the QR code on screen now, it will get you registered. So at the end, you are eligible for the survey form to go into this draw. And if you lost that code, here it is again on the second screen. Here are some of our recent lucky winners. Uh, we've had a few more uh, winners recently. Those prize packs have just recently been sent out. So expect them in your mailbox sometime soon. And just before we get on to today's topic, a uh, happy holy for any of those uh, in India who are celebrating today. Uh, today is part three of our building a 2D game series, um, Skeletal Animation. And with that, take it away. Sean. Hey everyone, my name is Sean. I am a field engineer at Unity Technologies. And today in this webinar, I'm going to be covering the third part of a three-part series on building 2D games with Unity. The topic for today is 2D skeletal animation. So jumping straight into it, these are the agenda for today. We're going to look at some examples of frame-by-frame -frame animation that's existing in today's games. And then we'll take a look at the, an overview of skeletal animation, which is the topic that we're going to be covering today, the advantages, disadvantages, and also just walk you through how to use the latest Unity 2D animation package to set this up for your own project in the future. 
So first of all, let's take a look at some frame-by-frame -frame animations in games today. So I think all of us know from drawing cartoons on flipbooks is that animation is drawn frame by frame. And this is typically how traditional animation is done with a lot of drawings. So the more drawings you have, the smoother your animation. But that's just one small part of creating a beautiful sequence of animation. You still have to pen in the outlines and then fill in the cells with the appropriate colors. And of course, all of this has to be done consistently on all your animation sequences by all your animators. And as you can imagine, in today's fast-paced world, this style of animation is difficult to reiterate. Any changes that you make during production would set you back several days to several weeks. The game that you see on screen here is Cuphead. It's taken approximately 50,000 frames of painstakingly hand-drawn animation at 24 frames per second to create this entire game. So you can imagine how long the production process was for this game. So let's take a look at an alternative way of animating your characters in games, which is 2D skeletal animation. With 2D skeletal animation, you can imagine your character being set up like a puppet, and you'll be able to reuse any body part for multiple animations without having to redraw them. You can imagine this being set up in a hierarchical manner, with a child-parent relationship between each sprite. The hip bone is connected to the thigh bone, the thigh bone is connected to the knee bone, the knee bone is connected to the leg bone, and the leg bone is connected to the feet. So here's a simple setup uh, built in Unity. There isn't really any skeleton being set up here, it's purely just hierarchical. You can see that all the, the, bone, all the bones, there's no bones, it's just sprites being ch children of another sprites. Right, so if I were to select the root object and rotate, you can see the entire body move. But if I select individual parts, you can see I can move the head and the neck and can be rotated independently. Right, so you just have to make sure that the pivot point is set up in the right way so that you can rotate each body part from their respective pivot points. Of course, there are limitations to this setup. It will feel a little bit rigid. There are no deformations to the sprite, I can't bend his arms unless I split it into two different parts. And there are no inverse kinematics. And so comes the Unity 2D animation package to the rescue. This has been created by our talented 2D team, and the solution is here to allow you to quickly rig and animate 2D characters in Unity easily. To import this package into your project, you can find it from the Unity Package Manager. Just open the Package Manager and search for 2D Animation. For today's webinar, I'm going to be using the Dragon Crashers demo. This demo is available for free on the Unity Asset Store, so do check it out. For now, I'm going to show you a little bit of the gameplay on this project. So let's go ahead and press Start. And this game features a couple of characters that you can dissect yourself when you download the project. And we're going to look at a few of them today. Here we see there's a knight, a witch, and a wolf warrior. And on the right, you'll see three different skeleton enemies with the same bone structure. Okay, so all of these characters are set up with the Unity 2D animation package. They're animated with the same tools. And the game that you're seeing now here is an idle game. So the characters are attacking themselves, but I can also click on them when they've charged up their superpower. So our witch Georgia um, has the power charged up. I'll just click on her. And also Sir Yarek and Wolfman Oris. Right, that's basically how the game is played. And here in the second part, we also showcase a rig created for a non-humanoid character. In this case, it's a dragon. So unfortunately, due to the time limit that we have for today's webinar, we won't be digging into the dragon's rig itself. But I'll show you how you can set up your own character rig for any of these humanoids. So let's let this battle play out for a while. There are some really cool effects that's worth noting. 
if you pay attention to the dragon's neck when it reaches out to bite at the our heroes over here you can see that he, his neck actually deforms quite nicely and quite naturally right there's no segmentation being done there it's basically just uh, mesh deformations on the sprite itself and i'll show you how you can do that on any character on any rig Okay, just a little bit more and our heroes are almost done. And although everyone's dead, we are victorious. And that earns us the right to look into and dig in deep into this project. So that's Dragon Crashes, everyone. Just a reminder again, you can get this entire project for free from the asset store itself. So in the Dragon Crashes project, there are a couple of scenes. One of it is a lineup scene for all the characters. You can see we have that one dummy base character, along with all our heroes and our skeleton enemies, as well as Rustin the Dragon. So you can feel free to dive into this project and poke around. For now, let's take a look at this base character rig. You can see that it's set up with a couple of bones um, that you would expect to see on a humanoid. It's got a shoulder bone. If I select it, you can see it's basically just uh, an arrangement in the hierarchy. The top section here are all its sprites. All right, and the bottom section here, starting from the root, this is, these are the bones. So that's the root bone over here. And then it just stretches all the way up. Remember the connection between all the bones? Of course, you start from the pelvis, the abdomen, the torso, the neck, and then the head. All right, so this is the torso. You can drag on it to rotate it. You can see it rotates only from its pivot point. Same with the hands. You can actually rotate the hands as well if you select it right. There's also an IK rig which allows you to easily move the entire limb itself rather than moving just uh, one bone at a time. All right, so this is available for all the limbs, including the legs, of course. Right, there's additional controls for the toes if you need them. All right, let me just pose this character in a victorious pose here. And what's really nice here is that you have control over the character in both inverse kinematics and forward kinematics in both IK and FK. And if you're not sure what those two terms are, I'll actually explain them later on in this webinar here. And uh, yeah, let's let's take a deeper look into how this is done. You can see that this arm here is actually just one same sprite, but that sprite is actually being bent. Right, this limb here, this entire arm is one sprite, but we're able to bend it. And the way that we're doing that is because this sprite is actually a mesh, right, made up of this cage of vertices here. So. What we're doing is actually moving all these vertices and lines. If you can see them, they're actually moved based on the influences of our bones. And now moving on to the workflow, I'm going to show you how you can import sprites and prepare them for animation rigging. And for this demo, we're going to be using the witch here. You can see this witch is also in the character lineup and she's already completely rigged up so you can move her around and control and pose her as you wish. So we're going to be using the witch character, but I'm going to be building this from scratch so you can see how the process is like, as well as introduce a couple of additional features to show you how we can really extend uh, this character, like adding some bones to the top of her hat and some additional deformations on her robe, as well as this front flap on her outfit here. So let's look at her file that we've imported into this project. So I'm going to just look at the witch file. And one thing you'll notice in the preview at the bottom left corner is that the witch file imported is already set up completely. It's the, the full character. It's not like what you'd see in a sprite atlas where all the body parts are separated. In fact, the cool thing about this is you can just bring in your character as it was set up by the artist without having to separate all her body parts like a sprite atlas right so you can arrange them as this and it would be imported as this right 
when you jump into rigging, um, your character would have already been arranged in the proper manner. So here you can see it included are the mask maps and the normal maps. These are maps that we've talked about in the last webinar on lighting, so we won't be covering them today. We'll just focus on rigging for now. So let's take a look at what this asset looks like in Photoshop. I'm just going to double click the imported file here and that'll open it in Photoshop. And you can see, as I mentioned, that the character is already set up as this. We don't have to separate it into a sprite atlas. So this also contains, as you can imagine, all the different variation for the eyes and the mouth. Right? So you can see they're being shown, they're overlapped. But sometimes as an artist, you don't want to see all these things overlap. It's not really you know, nice to look at. So the artist might actually hide some of these features. And we're going to look at how this will impact our import process later on. In the meantime, it's important to note that the file format that we're using for our import is a PSV file format, which stands for Photoshop Big. And this is identical to PSDs, but it supports up to 300,000 pixels in any dimension. And this file format is imported with the PSD importer that's part of the package manager as well. So to start, I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new empty scene just to start from scratch and then pull in a demo witch character which is separate from the witch character she's completely bare bones as in like literally she has no bones so we're going to add those ourselves and if you look at the skinning editor you can see that this she's imported as is as what you see in the PSV file along with the overlapping variants of her mouth and eyes if you look at the spread editor um, automatically the tool would also map out the sprite atlas for you so you don't have to do anything. Now back in the PSB file as I mentioned the artist may or may not save them with some of these layers hidden and if you go back to Unity with that same file you'll notice that uh, those variants have disappeared right they're no longer in the hierarchy but you can bring them in by checking in include hidden layers and the overlaps will come back and you can see them also present in a hierarchy next let's finally look at setting up the skeletal rig bones and back here once again i'm going to nitpick at these visible variants overlapping each other um, what we can do is if we check on this visibility tab right here you can actually choose to hide them temporarily right here just find the variants and then click on the eye icons to hide those variants here and first thing you want to do is create a bone for our character so i'll hit create bone and we want to create a bone for the pelvis but you should always start with the root of the character so i'll create a root bone press escape and uh, let's just switch over to a bone view here you can see the root bones being created and here you can see there's a yellow line that's pointing to my cursor that shows me where my next bone would be and which parent it belongs to. So it shows you that relationship, that yellow line stretching to my red, um, red bone there that shows me that relationship that this yellow bone is the child of the red one. So now I'm going to create two more bones, one pointing up and one pointing down. So now you see the green one. The green bone is going to be my abdomen that's pointing up and I have my pelvis that serves as also the, the power center of the character and I'm going to need another one and it looks like this is going to be a blue one and it's, this one's going to be pointing down and this bone is, will be the hip bone. So here as you can imagine with the pelvis as the center we have hip and abdomen. The leg bones that I'm building now these are going to be part of the hip bone All right so I'm creating two separate uh, legs here that's going to be part of the hip bone and then I'm selecting the abdomen and I'm just continuing the chain to the neck and the head now I'll select the torso and the torso is going to be the parent bone for my shoulder 
and the limbs and I'll have this stretching out as the weapon bone where our weapons will actually be attached to and shoulder bone again down to the hands and the weapon bone all right so this is the full character setup that's it it's really it's really quick to to really set up now you can already move the bones around all right you can start to pose her of course she doesn't affect the sprite yet we're going to fix that in a bit okay so you can just hit auto geometry which will create the geometry for your character go to auto weights and generate the weights in the bottom right you can now see that uh, the bones will start influencing the sprite of course it's not perfect and i'm going to show you how you can clean this up later on next i'm going to show you how you can really speed up your workflow by inheriting skeletal templates that you maybe have already created so if we look at this hierarchy of visibility here we have our abdomen which of course should actually be our torso and the child of our torso should be the neck and the child of the neck should be the head so there's a lot of bones that actually need renaming you can see they're all named incorrectly there are abdomens and there are hips and these have to be renamed now I'm going to show you a little trick to have these all renamed really, really quickly if you've done a base template before. And included in this project is this, of course, this puppet guy, this base project guy that's already been rigged nicely. As you can see, it's part of the Dragon Crasher project. If you look at his bone hierarchy, all his bones have been really nicely named. Right, and if you're familiar with uh, Unity 2D animation, you'll know that uh, the names of the bones are important for your animation clip. Let's go back to our witch character. And if you go to the import settings, you'll see there's this feature called character rig. Now I can select the main skeleton for this character and have that be based on our bipedal base character that we saw just now, that puppet guy. And having imported that, you can see that the rig is imported and all the names for the bones are inheriting from that base rig that we saw before. So I'm going to copy this rig, hit copy at the bottom left, and then remove that main skeleton reference, hit apply. You can see it reverts back to our old witch skeleton that we made before. Right? You can see all these are still abdomens and hips, so hit paste. And now we have transferred, basically transferred the base character's rig over to our witch. Now we can continue to set this up. You can see we you still need to regenerate the geometry. So let's hit auto geometry, generate all visible, and hit auto weights again. Generate all the weights, and we're back to where we started. All right. So next up, we're gonna have to fix all the influences to these bones. So let's check out how we can adjust the influences on our bones. Back in Unity here in our skinning editor, we have a couple of tools here at our disposal, one of which is the weight slider. But first, I'm going to repose her legs so you can see how the vertices are being affected by the wrong bones. So we're going to be using the weight slider and I'm going to double click the mesh so you can see the blue lines, those represent the vertices. And for this, I'm going to have these vertices that are selected be affected by the red bone there. So select the, all the vertices that I want, push up the slider so that the red bone takes over the influence for those. And same for these, bo these vertices, I'm going to have them be affected by the blue bone on the toe. You slide that up and you can see now they're being affected by the correct bones. Now, there's also a nice and convenient way to filter out these influences. You can do by bone or sprite influences. I like to do sprite influences. So what this does is, by selecting a particular bone, you can see what sprite that bone influences. So if I select the root bone, for example, if you look at the bottom right, it's actually affecting the right leg, which shouldn't be the case because the root bone is supposed to be just a structural bone. So I'll just remove that. If you look at the pelvis, 
pelvis is also a structural bone so I don't want it to actually affect the torso so we can remove that and then I can select the abdomen the abdomen affects the torso and the coat back which is okay you want that and then let's look at the chest the chest also affects the hair back which is wrong the chest shouldn't move the hair so we'll remove that from the influence uh, it should affect the torso that's correct not the neck and the neck element is correct because it's attached to the the coat that she's wearing and then if you look at the neck the neck shouldn't affect the hair it also shouldn't affect the coat it also shouldn't affect the torso and the neck element and the head and the hair front so there's a lot to filter out for the head uh, it's less it's not supposed to affect the neck for the rest the eyes it should be part of the head so I'm just going to speed through all of this and this is just thinking through which bone should move uh, which sprite right it's just think of it logically right the arm bone shouldn't be affecting anything on the leg sprites similarly the leg bones shouldn't affect anything on the character's hair right so there's a lot to to go through here so i'm just going to speed through them right so you just need to think of it logically like what you should do to to filter these out so once you've you've gone through this process it makes it a lot easier to kind of paint out each vertex because uh, if you don't do it this way you you'll find yourself having to find every single vertex point on on all your sprites to just remove manually right so this is the best way to filter out by sprites and by bones all right this looks like a long and tedious process but it's actually uh, quite simple you can really eliminate them quite quickly we should be done any moment now right the lower you go in the the hierarchy here there are less and less influences to freely filter out so you can see once we head into the hips and legs section it's going to be a lot less to remove right so hips should be affecting part of the torso here for the thighs no coat back no torso no coat front that's going to be a different bone for the calf that's okay foot yeah, just don't affect the other foot and yeah as you can see if we once we remove the influences some of the sprites would pop back into place right and if you look at the sprite to the character now she's starting to look a lot better right and now if I move her legs you can see it doesn't affect other parts of her body anymore Great. that's awesome now let's look at the legs here you can see when I twist or actually bend her legs the upper part of her leg isn't actually as smooth as I'd like it this doesn't look like you can see the it bends and there's a sharp line that's bending the top of her thighs so that's not really ideal so what I want to do is actually add two points here and I can do that by hitting create vertex and just click on the edges to add additional vertices and now if I pose her you can see now it's a lot rounder in that corner of the sprite right so it's a nicer more smoother bend so that we can also visualize the influences of our bones on all our vertices with a nice debunk view if we look at the top right there's a slider here if you push or you can see that the mesh of the sprite is colored based on the bones that influence them so you can see here on this shin here it's completely pink because it's controlled by the shin bone and on this yellow bone here there are absolutely no yellow influences so that's going to look a little weird so we need to paint in some yellow influences so what I've got selected is my weight brush and with the weight brush you can see 
this is a circle that's on my cursor and you can just start dragging my cursor on the vertices I can start adding uh, influences where I want the bone to affect you know, the vertex so here you go as I move my yellow bone you can see it moves certain parts of the mesh as well okay so that's how you can use the visualization tool at the top right to kind of visualize the influences of your bones on your vertices okay let's restore that and look at the other leg now double click that to pull that to the front of the camera and it's the same thing here you can see that bending is not ideal so we could just add more vertices right let's just add create vertex and add it to that two points where we saw earlier and that should fix it let's pull that up and bend it down that's a nice bend and you can see here this doesn't look quite right right again just use my paintbrush paint it back into place and uh, the shin obviously has not enough control over the actual sprite where the shin is so as you can see as I paint it the proportions start to fix itself right, so you just need to get the, the, the right influences in place okay so let's look at the arms now and same thing here, if I bend the elbow, it doesn't look great. Right? There's a sharp turn on the elbows, so you can also add vertices where uh, that's missing. So I'll just add two vertices here, and another two vertices on the other arm. Okay, that should fix it for that one. Now let's look at some other parts of the body. If I rotate the torso, you can see something's wrong. The coat is not connected. And actually, this is why we separate both uh, hips and abdomen, so that we can rotate the two different sets of hierarchies separately. And then, we, of course, we all have the, the pelvis, which is the yellow one, so that we can move and translate the entire body, like both sections of the body, together. Now, you saw earlier the front coat is not assigned properly. It doesn't actually have any influence. So when I move the abdomen, it didn't move at all. So it's missing all these influences. So what I can do with the bone influence mode selected, just select the bones that I want, hit plus, and that will add the, that to the chain of influence there. Okay, so now both the, the, actually the hips, torso and abdomen all three will affect the the front coat we just need to paint it right so i'm just going to use the weight slider um, and have the chest influence all of it okay and then select the middle section and this middle section will be controlled or influenced by the abdomen and the bottom section would be the hips so let's pull that up and let's check the influences okay it looks like it might be missing the might have made a mistake here for the abdomen whoops that's not right yeah select the abdomen and push that up and you can see now it it flows right and kind of blends nicely between all the three different bone influences so I'll just use the weight brush and kind of try to smooth out the blending here okay and that should just do it All right let's give this a try so if I rotate the abdomen you can see the front coat now blend it bends together all right the bottom part of the coat bends with the hips and everything works just right okay it looks like looks like it was a success we've painted pretty much everything nicely of course this is not um, kind of an in-depth paint but we've got most of the important bits done 
Now I'm going to look at adding additional bone features to this character. Great, time for a quick pause. Thanks, Sean. Um, we'll go through a couple of Q&A questions now. While we're doing that, uh, just to remind everybody, we'll be giving away an additional Unity swag pack today for the best question. That person uh, will need to be on the webinar at the end so that we can draw uh, that prize. Um, and that will be selected live during the session. And to the field engineering team, Sean, if there's a couple of questions you would like to answer live now, please go ahead and do so that we've got so far. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Andy. I think we've got some really, really good quality questions today, and tech is uh, answering quite a lot of them. Um, I see there's a question from Luke on uh, some animations like jumping or falling. I want to make the character's legs fold a bit. So when the character hits the ground, there will be a period of time where the character hovers before switching to idle animation. Is there any way to fix this? So this sounds more like an aesthetic question. It's in how long you can hold the character. So with skeletal animation, it's just a matter of adding additional keyframes, right? So, um, and what you really need to do is really tweak the, the curves, animation curves, just to have them hold for a bit. Uh, but that's, that's more into animation. So we'll be covering more on rigging today. Uh, so maybe we'll, we'll, we'll tackle animation in, in the future, something more in depth. Um, there are others that were answered already, so I'll maybe I'll dig up some of those. So there's one from David Russell saying, if I have a PSB with one layer for the person and others for just clothes, weapons, jewelry, will I be able to animate that, that in this way? You can. So if it's just assuming it's just two layers, one for the entire character and one for the accessories, you still can do that. It's just um, you would have to paint the, the vertices just right. Uh, for all the, uh, for that, that entire layer. And so it, it, it would be a lot easier if you separate them to different different layers. Uh, so you could have more control, kind of segment the, the distribution. Are the rigs programmable from Brian Lee? Uh, yes, they are. They're, at the end of the day, they are still just uh, a hierarchy in your, your Unity hierarchy. So you can definitely still reprogram them and you know, move them around. Let's see, there are yeah, quite a lot of good ones that we've already previously answered to. Okay, well, one is, uh, sorry, I'll sorry. just take one more. Yeah, one more from David again. Uh, are the things being affected, hair, and et cetera, based on the PSB layers? So this is assuming, um, thinking in terms of the bone influences on the hair uh, on, on the sprites are based on the layer. So it's, it's based on the proximity to, to that bone. And also, you can actually choose whether or not to only affect the have the influence be affected based on the visual overlap. Like if the bone is sitting on top of that, that sprite, then only it would um, affect the vertices, right? Uh, so maybe later on, the actually the 2D team is with us in this webinar, so maybe they can uh, chime in uh, for one of the, some of the more technical questions. Uh, for now, I think we can move on with the webinar. Okay, so we've set up the basics right, the, the abdomen, the arms, the limbs, the legs, but there are additional things you can do to this character, like this hat, for example, you could add additional bones so that we can animate the hat. And also this front flap and that front coat of the character. We could add control so bones on the side of the hat, but we're gonna stick with just those three extra bones, the hat, the front flap, and the coat. So what I'm going to do is select create bone and select the head and then just extend this upwards to however many bone that feels just right. And then select the hip. The hip will be the parent for our coat flap here. Press escape to change to a different bone. And uh, this is also going to be part of the hip. Yeah, I'll just create two bones here to control our flaps. Okay, that will be it.
Right? We can still edit the placement of our bones if you um, placed it wrongly. Okay, so we're going to deal with our bone on top here first for the hat. All right, let's look at the bone influences. Okay, and then let's try to adjust the the weightage here. All right, select all the the top part of the hat and make this be controlled by the base. And then the upper section will be another bone. Top section here will be also again another bone. All right, push that fluence up, and then of course the tip of it will be controlled by the ah we missed out this one I think push this influence up yeah there we go you can see the colors now so that's a good indicator that we're giving the correct influences so now the the very tip maybe the last four here should be controlled by this red bone at the end yes now we have this smooth transition of color which is nice it's quite satisfying in a way now yeah, we've seen that deform, but now we're seeing a problem is that shifting this blue bone here is actually deforming the hat in ways that we don't want to. So we'll have to fix that. So a way to fix this is actually to change the edit the vertices. Alright, so what I'm going to do is just add some vertices here to kind of wrap around the hat more tightly and more uh, accurately and uh, now let's just go ahead and do that and then pull this down to the tight edge of the hat and now I'll have to create some uh, structural segmentations here so I'm going to use the uh, create edge tool to kind of segment this hat so that we can keep the structure of the, the bottom flare of the hat, right? So just click on the geometry to create those edges. And what I'm going to do is make sure only the, you know, let's look at the influences first. And uh, might want to change the color of this because the head and the top hat has the same color oh, and might as well actually just change the the naming of our bones here which I forgot to do so let's just go ahead and do that and then change the color of our hat let's do something different maybe green or maybe something more contrasted like red yeah that should do it right so now we can see the difference so let's just select the vertices you can see now it's red, right? So I need this to be uh, properly segmented. So the bottom structure here should be controlled by the head bone. And the two parts on top of the hat should be controlled by the first hat bone. Okay. Oh, looks like something went wrong here. Oh, okay, the, the eyedropper tool is a bit sticky. That's okay, let's set it back to red. And uh, actually, alternatively, we could use the brush tool to maybe fix this instead. Okay, no worries, let's use the brush tool. Let's paint off the sides here. All right, so now the hat, the top hat controls these two bones sorry these two vertices and uh, oh we still need to paint the bottom yeah select the head completely control the bottom structure of the hat okay that should do it all right so now you can see if we right, move the hat around right it's not going to deform the bottom of the hat anymore perfect all right let's look at it without these influences there we go beautiful and that's really how you can have additional control over your uh, your influences 
over your sprites where you can create segmentations for that and now let's look at the other parts of the, the new features we're adding for this front flap right um, let's take a look at what we can do here with the torso looks like I've made the placement a little bit wrong because uh, the bones are too in now you should move them a bit lower okay and add this to the influence for the torso first and maybe might as well just rename them to flap zero and flap one Right, make sure they're also influencing the the torso sprite and uh, oops, select that torso. Right, set the influences up. Okay, and then we need the the vertices down here to be influenced by the blue bone here but you can see the blue bone is a bit high up right my placement is wrong a little bit wrong here so i'm just going to move the bone down no worries all of these can be fixed at any point in time all right so it's much closer to the vertices this makes a lot more sense than putting it way up there all right you really need to understand the, uh, the structure or maybe the layout of your sprite a lot more okay so let's go ahead and select the slider select the vertices and the bones that we want to be associated with one another and create that influence all right i think we may not have enough vertices right, to make this look good so i'm just going to adjust the vertex maybe add more vertices Okay, just arrange them nicely, more evenly spaced out. That would give us a nice effect. Okay, and then reassign those influences. And for the bottom flap as well. Don't miss out that vertex. Whoops, wrong one. No worries, just select the bone again and bump it up. Okay, so now if we rotate it, look at that. Now the front flap is independent. We can move that. It's not going to be a static flap con constrained to the hips. We can always animate that separately. Now same for the front flap of the front coat. I'm going to go ahead and rename this to the back flap, back flap one. Okay, and then let's see, yeah, add this to the sprites influence. So these two bones will be influencing the coat flap. All right, use the weight slider. For the parts where we want the vertex to influence right now we have this really nice smooth kind of influence map going on okay spread that arm out a bit and you can see oh actually the back part of the coat isn't following it's right detached but we can always add you know these two bones that we made to influence them Right, and do the same thing, just paint it and have it be influenced by those bones. Right, so select the yellow bone, paint it until we're satisfied with the amount of influence that's shared amongst all the different bones. Same with the green, and now you can see yeah, the back flap of the coat also following that bone. Right, so as you animate that front flap, the back flap is also animated. Look at that. Preview that. Remove the influence debug view. Animate. And now we have this animatable. 
right? Imagine that. Imagine a wind there being wind in your game, and that's affecting the animation on your character. So really add that extra extra finishing touch to your animation. Okay, and next we're going to look at the sprite library feature, which allows you to swap sprites for your entire character rig. And here we are back in Unity. You can see our characters like nicely rigged with the proper influences now. All the bones are there. You can even move the flaps. Remember the flaps? Right? Even the, the hat bones. You can adjust them and they deform quite nicely. And next is we're going to do the sprite swapping on the face. As you can see, they're overlapping once again. So what I'm going to do is we're going to use a feature called Sprite library it's part of the 2d animation feature all right and this needs a sprite library asset so i'm going to go ahead and create one now this is under 2d sprite library asset right i'll call this demo bitch okay so you can like the skeleton rig earlier you can set like a main library if you've created one template before and this basically just creates the categories for uh, different parts of the body like face the shoulder the mouth and the eyes as well all right so selecting our demo which again now all we have to do is just replace the base sprites with the sprites that's associated with our demo which all right, so shoulder, I'm going to assign the shoulder, specifically the witch's shoulder and then the witch's arm, arm R. Just follow the, the naming scheme. Fortunately, the naming scheme is the same, followed by our artist. So I'll just slowly assign them now. So this will take a while. Just bear with me here. Just go ahead and assign the neck elements just have to find them one by one coat front it's the neck next is the torso okay just need to have a little patience assigning all of these just a little bit more Next is the hand L top, there it is. Arm L. Then the hairs. And here are the ones with the variants. This is the mouth. So there are three variants to the mouth. Just replace the appropriate ones. Mouth open, mouth close, and mouth the mouth teeth and mouth normal. Same with the eyes, this close and open. And lastly, the right side of the eye, closed and open. And we're done. Just remember to hit apply. And next, make sure to also assign the sprite library asset to the sprite library component. Okay. And Let's go to the mouth variants. Let's turn off the multiple variants and uh, pick one as the main. Add a sprite resolver. And from your original sprite, it'll be able to detect which category it belongs to and give you the variants which you can use for your animations. All right, same thing for your eyes. Let's pick the open eyes. Add a sprite resolver there. Yep. And now you'll be able to swap your eyes. And that's how you set up the sprite resolver with sprite library. And now we're down to the last step of the entire rigging process, which is setting up inverse kinematics controllers. So before we continue setting up the rig, I'd like to spend some time to explain what forward and inverse kinematics are to um, users who are new to the concept. So with any animation, the goal is to really move our character to a pose 
uh, to a target pose and in this case let's take that um, the red marker there as the target and for us to move our character to that target we can't just move that forearm there we have to move its like its upper arm before we move the forearm and then adjust the upper arm again and if we want we also have to adjust the uh, torso and abdomen and if we do adjust the torso and abdomen we have to propagate this kind of movement forwards right to our child arms so this is moving forwards in in the the chain of skeleton this is forward kinematics now inversely in inverse kinematics you're given an effector or a controller to move the end point of your chain so if you move it to a particular goal that entire chain of skeletons connected to it would actually adjust itself to accommodate and resolve that and final pose. So in our character, we can actually set up an IK using the 2D animation package as well. So here you can see by default you have your FK forward kinematics controls. And to add our IK, just add an IK manager component to the root of the character first. And this will help assist you in creating the chains. So we have a couple of options. One is the chain CCD. And this chain CCD is a popular IK algorithm for resolving your inverse kinematics. So what we can do is actually set up our hat here. All right. Um, and to do this, we need to set an effector, which is usually the end, the, the final bone at the tip of the chain all right so i'm just going to go ahead and select that last bone on our hat okay and let's just rename this to the hat ccd solver uh, find our hat drag that over to our effector you'll notice that the create target option is grayed out so for this to appear we need to actually define the number of chains the number of bones that we want so if i just increase the chain length you'll see that the bones start to light up and they show the chains that are involved now these settings here are meant to help you optimize your ik solver algorithm and because as you move these chains each of these bones here try to resolve their positions iteratively all right so there's a limit to how many times do you solve so let's hit create target and what that does is it creates this new controller as a child of the ccd solver and now you can move that bone and all the bones connected to it will move along now let's do the same for our limbs for our left arm here We're just going to go back to our ik manager 2d and if we the plus button you'll see there's a fabric chain which is just a different algorithm it's a variant of the ccd but for this we're going to just use the limb solver and change this to left arm okay assign the effector which is the last bone in the chain there all right let's yeah, drag that over to effector and just we should be able to just hit create target and that creates that additional game object all right that we can move all right so now it looks like the arm is bent the other way so we can just hit flip and this will correct our bones if you need to flip it back the other way you can always do that in animation um, and notice that we can't rotate the ah uh, the hand here that the end hand that's because we have this option constrained rotation turn on so if you turn that off now we can freely rotate the hands of our character okay so let's try to set up the other limbs okay create another limb this will be for our right arm this time so just rename this the turn let's just assign this first right create a target you can see now we can move that arm that 
that flip is not right so let's just flip that and then let's go ahead rename this to right arm same for the legs they're all the same they're also limbs so just go ahead and create another limb solver rename this to leg Le left leg yeah and assign that leg as the effector make sure that's the correct one yeah, it doesn't look like it. it should be foot let's just assign that again select the foot let's drag that foot up okay and create target right that'll give us that effector and we can move this again still oops yeah, i'm not selecting the right thing or he's just just selecting the wrong bone we should be selecting the effector and not the bone there we go cool yeah now i can animate the legs as well all right let's do the same uh don't constrain the rotation so i can rotate the legs the feet all right okay lastly the the same bone for the same solver for the other bone for the right leg so actually the right foot now All right drag that over create the target same thing right by grabbing the solver or the effector you're able to drag it around and also move the feet perfect and at the same time, I can still use my character's FK bones to move around. It's perfect. If at any point I don't want to use my IK, uh, I can always switch it off. Because sometimes using uh, FK controls is much easier, much more convenient than controlling or messing around with uh, your IK factors. So now let's look at how we can animate the 2D rig. All right, so it's time to have some fun with our rig. Let's restore the pose. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually just give her a sword or a weapon. So I'm going to show you how you can assign a weapon to the character. So I know she's a witch, but it would be fun if the witch also is able to wield the sword right let's not discriminate so i'm just gonna put that sword in her hand all right so what we can do is actually parent it just parent it under the left hand right so that it will follow the hands position right just adjust it to where i want it to be um, and then sort it in layer so that it's between the back hand and the front part of the hand. There we go. Nice. So now that she has her weapon equipped, we can start posing her around. You can see all her bones are there intact. We can control her IK, control her FK. Let's just gain back our F IK weight. All right. I can also move the end point with her hands over there All right so of course this is not really an animation webinar um, we're just going to do like a simple uh, keyframe to keyframe pose nothing too fancy just to test out our rig really so I'm just going to add an animator component All right create a new animation just to test out our character Okay, start off by yeah enabling auto keyframe, right, and then start posing her. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to like grab her pelvis to show you guys something cool. Now that's her hips. Those, that's her abdomen. That's also her hip. Hmm. Okay, it looks like. there's somewhere ah okay there there it is the pelvis 
right? So if I move my pelvis, you can see that the other limbs are pinned to their IK. So when I move my hips, everything is, is reacting accordingly, which is a nice effect. Right, so I can lower down the hips, move the legs, spread it out. Okay, and start to pose my character. And of course, this is still in IK mode, so I can change this, so I'll just move this down. Same for the other arm. And there we go, we have our, our first pose. Not the best pose in the world, but we're just testing things out. That's the first initial pose, and then we'll just pick another endpoint. Right? And all you have to do since uh, auto keyframe is on, just move your poses. As you can see, I can move the pelvis, and that moves all the other limbs together, which is really nice as they're pinned into place. And yeah, let's just try to get this other pose in. And now we can preview that. Yeah, let's just lower this down. Let's preview that. There we go. Our first animation from our first rig. So with that, you have a character that's ready to animate within an hour, so really quickly. Okay, so to recap what we've done, we've looked at an overview of frame-by-frame -frame animation versus skeletal animations and uh, the rest of it is really setting up the entire skeletal bone rig, importing everything, setting the bone influences, set up the IK and FK rigs, and then of course testing it out with our simple little animation there. So that's all for my webinar. My name is Sean and I am a field engineer at Unity Technologies. If you have any other questions for today's webinar, feel free to reach out to me on my socials on the current slide now. And thank you so much for joining us in today's webinar. I hope to see you guys again soon. Awesome. Thank you, Sean. Fantastic session as usual. Uh, just checking the uh, Q&A. Q&A box. Um, is there any questions you want to answer there? I'll let you uh, take yeah, a look. Yeah, there's just, on. Yep. just one there, uh, text answering it. I think, uh, it's asking how efficient is this method from traditional animation? So for traditional animation, as you saw in the beginning, you'd have to draw every single pose. Uh, for this, you'd have to just draw that the base character. And then when you set it up as a puppet, you can, can reuse that same asset. So you don't have to go back and redraw that again. So um, I mean, it's it's quite it, it saves a lot of time, so you don't have to draw fifty thousand frames for your entire game. Great, just is a reminder. A... Mm -hmm. sorry, sorry, Sean, have you finished? Sorry. Yeah, there's one more question about if there is a character skin change mode in Unity. So uh, yes, you can use the sprite library that we showed you earlier. If you just swap out the library to a different library, it will just change the the sprite set that you have for each character. So you can effectively just use the same thing that we showed you earlier, sprite library and the sprite resolver to swap out the, uh, the assets in the same rig very quickly. Okay, while we're waiting for a couple more questions, uh, if there's any to come through, a uh, reminder that the survey link is now in the chat box at the bottom of your screen. Uh, if you would like to opt in to be a uh, today's lucky winner of our uh, swag draw, please put your email address and opt in at the end of that survey. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback so that we can continue to deliver content to you that is uh, relevant to your uh, needs and desires. Um, and there will be a special draw today also for the best question while Sean's taking a look uh, for that question. Have you chosen it already, Sean, or are you looking? Yeah, I've chosen uh, uh, a good question of the day. Excellent. Um, there's one about the role of the alpha tolerance in the auto geometry section earlier uh, when we're generating, generating geometry for our character sprite. So there's this option called the alpha tolerance. So the infinites, uh, one of our guests asks what, what that's about. So the alpha tolerance kind of determines um, how to generate the sprite geometry. So some sprites that you have, they're not so definitively shaped like what we have here. Some sprites could have uh, you know, a fuzzy opacity, right? So the opacity could be 20%, 30%, 80%. It's semi-transparent. So this alpha tolerance lets you uh, 
um, you know, not cut off that, that transparency. You could either take the, the whole range or maybe like halfway through it. So this allows you to ensure that the areas of your software transparency don't get ignored by the geometry generation. And who is that question by Sean? The, that's by the infinites. Excellent. I'm just messaging the account owner for that now directly in the Zoom chat. Great. The infinites, I've sent you a private message in the chat box. Please provide your email address so we can contact you for delivery uh, for your prize for today's question. And is there any other questions you would like to highlight there, Sean, while we're waiting for that response, maybe some questions that have already been answered that may be a benefit to the uh, to the team, to other viewers? Yeah, this one uh, by AG asking uh, to have the wind light effect, wind light effect for the hair coat, front coat and the back. Um, would we have to animate them separately or is there a method to mimic wind swaying light effect? Uh, so you can uh, use an avatar mask for your, your characters, just assign like which transform you want to not be animated by your base animation. Um, so this is maybe something we can cover in a future webinar uh, where we look into the mechanism animator, but essentially you can target which bones can be animated by um, a specific animation layer. And then, so you have your base uh, animation for your, your walking, your idle, your running. Um, and you don't have to redo that if you have an environment with, with wind on it. You can animate that separately as a different animation clip and then layer that on top and have an animation mask target just that specific bones to, to animate. Uh, so that's, that's how you can add on animation on top of an existing animation. And to the infinite, uh, your email has been received. Thank you. I've dropped you a note. Um, and uh, with that, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for attending today. Uh, we hope this session was useful. We have two more game series coming up uh, over the coming months. There'll be a build a uh, arcade racer and they'll be building a shooter series. They'll be slightly longer than this series, but it will take you through each of the steps in building those in the, those games. And if you have any other further questions or we didn't answer your questions today, please feel free to reach out to Sean or to us on the SAPAC events email address, which would have been on your email invite when you registered for this event and we look forward to seeing you all next week have an awesome friday thanks everybody